Hey, what is going on YouTube? Hey, Aaron here. We are in the Napoli for the first look video. The newest legendary cruiser to be added to the Bureau. Yes, grind for four to five months here. Let's keep up the, the Bureau Wargaming. We're, we're doing great. But uh, no, in all seriousness, I wasn't absolutely in love with this ship when it was first announced. I'm still not overly in love with it. But guys, this is actually a fairly fun ship. It's pretty dominant. Um, it has the second highest accuracy at the tier. On top of that, you can get it down to, look, 9.9 .9 concealment. Um, it, it's, it's just an Italian cruiser, and the Italian cruisers are pretty fun. Um, the thing I actually think will be a little bit better about this cruiser is it does not have SAP. Um, so you have AP and HE only. I know that that, you know, SAP would have been fun, but the Venezia at the same tier has 15 guns of 203 millimeter as opposed to these, which are 254. And I just think it works. It's, it's a decent overall package. Now, um, sometimes you're going to be spamming HE, and we know that this is the, this will be the least effective HE spammer besides the Stalingrad <laughs> because it doesn't have HE. But, uh, today's video, we have a pretty exciting game for you guys. I actually had uh, quote unquote, the damage record. Um, we had like a 220, 230 game, which is, we know that it, I'm, I'm just joking about that because only the CCs have the ship right now. But, um, unfortunately I wasn't recording that one, but this one is a, a fairly high damage game. It shows the versatility and utility of this ship. There's only two destroyers here and we don't, there's either one in that smoke, but I'm pretty sure it's the Mino. So we are almost, a sh you know, we, we know it's the Mino right now as we lose a, Yamato in 90 seconds. 90,000 hit points gone in 90 seconds. But we took the blind fire there. We actually get a nice chunk of damage off him, including the Citadel. Now, the Citadel actually doesn't do that much damage. I only think it's about 6,000. Um, and as always, stats and commander guide at the end. But if you notice our position here, we're not like, you know, bow tanking. We're, we're what we're called stern tanking. We're able to angle our armor against all targets um, while getting all guns on target at the same time. Um, a lot of people don't understand this position or, or never use it, um, and it, it's a tricky position to get into and sometimes even more tricky to get out of, especially if you're on, you know, in the middle and you're giving up a little more broadside to a further flank. But uh, this is a position that the Napoli will excel in, mainly because of the firing angles of the guns. Um, you can't get the rear turret on quite as much without um, stern tanking as you post to getting both of the front on um, in this position. But we are just providing a DPM support role right now. We know that Yamato put out one fire, don't know why, and that Yamato is backing up spamming HE, so we are, we are doing all right. Also, that Mino cannot really hit us or is not choosing to hit us, um, but our DD is getting dangerously close, so we, we want to be paying attention to that if he decides to either come out of that smoke or get detected because that DD was so close. You can see me switch to AP there because in the back of my head, I knew that was going to happen. We go ahead and pop our smoke screen here to back up so that way we can get an angle um, on this Mino as he is going away. We get the shot off. He slows down just a bit. You can see that that's not the most accurate salvo, but this is, boom, four Citadels, uh, of five hits there. This is not an accuracy build. Like we mentioned, we were running Membelli. So we're running an agile type build uh, and still getting fairly accurate salvos. Now, I did notice slightly more accurate salvos um, with the accuracy build, duh. But uh, I don't think that puts the Napoli in the best position uh, to use the ship to its fullest, um, you know, strengths, which are concealment, maneuverability, uh, and the quick duration smoke screen there, as well as hard handing guns. And I actually get a few torpedo hits here. So make sure you're throwing out your sea mines. Um, the, the problem is where the, the player is at 13.5 is not where they're going to be, you know, when they're at six or seven or, you know, even, even by the time that those torps get there. So just keep that in mind uh, as we pass the minor torps there. We, the Montana, or I'm sorry, the Yamato gives us broadside. So we go and switch to AP. And, uh, yeah, we're going to go on the offensive here. Maybe a little aggressive push, but we got that Yamato on fire. And again, just like the Montana, he put out a solo fire. So not we could have got a little bit higher damage. And that is one thing that you will probably not be getting. Um, this thing does not have the best fire chance. It's still like 16 or 17, which is pretty decent. But with a 15 second reload, um, I actually kind of forget what the exact fire chance is. But it's not the best um, compared to like the Yoshino or something. Um, and like we mentioned with the long reload, you want to be utilizing your ammo types as we do here. We saw the Kronstadt start to turn. We loaded the AP. We get a fairly decent salvo over the island and a nice hit. Um, Citadeling a Kronstadt is not easy, but uh, a good 15, 20K off of him um, with including a Citadel. Uh, but we work our way into the cap here, and this is where your concealment is, is 
pretty advantageous. 9.9 .9 kilometers on a ship that big, it's just a trade of wargaming. I don't know how. Um, I guess the concealment is sometimes determined by tonnage, but I feel like this ship should <laughs> should outweigh like a lot of others. But anyway, um, so we are able to remain undetected in the cap here. The Kronstadt is actually not looking at us. Um, so we're going to go ahead and shoot here while we secure this cap. Uh, you know, do, making sure you're playing these ships to the best of their abilities is is going to be um, very detrimental in determining whether or not you're you're providing support for your team. If you're just sitting in the back spamming HE, this is going to be an awful cruiser for you. But if you're getting up, getting flanks, launching torpedoes, switching to AP, you can already see we've done 87,000 damage um, in, in, you know, five minutes here. And we we've barely been shot at, number one. And we've barely been noticed by the enemy team. But in this position, this allows us to to now get focused more with with our health that we saved in the beginning, uh, and and provide a little um, relief uh, from our team. Now this game is kind of how update day went. You guys saw it on stream last night. It was kind of frustrating, honestly. But we know that the people on update day, um, we just hope that they don't drive cars on the road because <laughs> um, it it just baffles me the lack of critical thinking that goes on sometimes in in a game like this. But we all know that not everyone's going to be, you know, super unicum, um, which is fine. And that is evident uh, kind of in this game. Now, it does turn out to come a little bit closer than it probably should have been. Um, as you can see now, we're actually tied on ships with them having the destroyer advantage. But um, because we have all three caps, which is why I so, so much prefer domination, we're just going to go ahead and start our kite here. Um, and I actually think I, I potato this turn just a little bit, but it actually, I think it saves me. Yeah, no, I think, uh, I think right here I get stuck on this island as this Yamato shoots and it might've saved me from a, a pretty nasty broadside. This thing is very chunky. Uh, it has very good armor. It has very, very good armor. And we will go over that in the end, but you can take a broadside or two, uh, if you make a mistake, but you know, try and save your smoke screen for that and, uh, don't give broadside too often. Uh, I, I don't think I've been dev struck yet. Or, or, you know, we, we test a little bit of the armor and everyone likes to shoot at the new ship on the first day. But uh, we have yet to get, in, uh, I think I've lost, uh, you know, one or two citadels there. But, you know, you've got fairly good turtle back and like we said, a, a lot of good plating. So if you just angle, if you use your brain, then you, uh, you can do just fine and not take too much damage. But as you see, one of those sea mines we locked, launched at the Kronstadt actually hits the Yamato. Um, and, and causes a flood. So we're going to maneuver over here and keep the HE loaded. Now, I probably should have switched to the Kronstadt here, um, but I was being a little bit greedy and wanted to get that permanent fire. We go ahead and launch our plane and uh, and our smoke screen here to turn out, but we are running on the edge of Kronstadt's radar, which is something people forget when they pop smoke screens. It's, it's really funny to me when a destroyer... I had a destroyer yesterday... A gearing like go like seven kilometers in front of a Des Moines and then pop a smoke screen like dude what are you doing like <laughs> do you not I understand not everyone knows like all the ships and their capabilities but that is something you should probably start to learn if you want to be if you want to have more than a 12 percent uh you know <laughs> win rate there is is the different radar cruisers this game is very complex but it's also very easy um, just to, you know, kind of understand the basics. It's like, okay, radar cruiser, let's not smoke up right in front of that. But as you see, we were actually on the edge of the Kronstadt radar there, um, but we kind of got out of it without any, um, you know, any problems there. On top of that, we're angle again, angling again, um, angling away because we know we want to draw these guys into us. Uh, we can launch torpedoes into them, and we, we have the cap, so they have to chase us. That is part of the advantage and why I hate capture the base. We mentioned it a thousand times as we get another torpedo and the kill on that Yamato. Um, is when you have the capture points, that, that is a way to outplay bad teammates. Um, when they die, you can, you know, you get the capture points. Now, we, we talked about this the other day on stream. You shouldn't sacrifice yourself to get the capture point, or I think I was talking about it in member games. You shouldn't sacrifice yourself to get the capture point, but um, we, we were concealed and we had a destroyer advantage, so we went ahead and got that capture point, and now the enemy is down majorly on points. So even though they're killing all of our um, teammates, you know, without, and our teammates are just donating their health, we still have the advantage. Um, so that is something to think about, and this ship excels at that. A little bit of coaching here while we're doing the, the Napoli replay. Anyway, we are moving into the cap here. 
Um, we have mitigated a lot of damage. We have angled, we have uh, dodged, and we've used our smoke screens. So now we are able to push these advantages. Um, we don't really have to. We have the cap advantage, we have the point advantage, but we know that that Kronstadt is low. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and push into him. We also have Torps, and he does not. Now, I kind of make the silly decision to load AP here for some reason. I should have just kept the HE loaded, but I, I wanted to, if he was broadside, I wanted to just blap him. Um, and we also had the Torp, so I knew that if he wasn't broadside, we were just going to Torp him. Um, but, in the, of course, in perfect timing, he, he comes up detected here. And I thought this Yoshino was going to get the kill, but he gets the unlucky RNG. Um, but he's angled, so, again, should have had the HE, but we, load, we aim for the superstructure, and we kind of take him off the board for our second kill there. Um, now we know that there's a Z46 left. Um, we're not detected here, so we know these not within our concealment range. As we see, the Yamato is providing the the enemy Yamato is providing ultimate support for his team at the uh, A2 square in the absolute back of the map. But we can also see those torpedoes there, so we know he is somewhere out between. Yeah, we we know he's somewhere where that guy pinged um, because of the, the Z46 and knowing his torpedoes. He has 10 kilometer torpedoes max, and you can see they're honestly still going there. Um, so that we, we know that he's fairly close or, or not that far away um, because of the, you know, the launch and the direction of his torps. You know, kind of knowing and understanding things like that, again, will net you much better results and an, a, an understanding of the game that not many people have. Um, some people just think they go in, they rush in, they they pull the trigger, they drop their torpedoes, and that's it. Um, and and I just disagree with that because it you know if you want to do that, go play AI. Some people actually want to have a little more immersive um, experience with a little bit of strategy behind it. But uh, that's my opinion. That's how I play, um, and it's usually fairly successful. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and skip ahead here. We get this cap, and. Uh, we, we take some broadside shots at the Yamato, but the, the next part of this game is fairly boring, so we'll go ahead and skip ahead to that. Now here we are with this Yamato finally in rage. We have the AP loaded. Uh, unfortunately, with this build, you don't have that much range, but honestly, cruisers don't need more than 15 or 16 kilometers of range. If you need that much range, you're not playing them correctly. You're probably playing a Colbert at 30 kilometers and just being an absolute detriment to your team. Um, but we get the, the nice broadside there and not that much damage, but we do tick the high caliber here in the final seconds of this game. Um, and we also do know that there, there is a DD out to our left. Um, we can, you can see the targeting indicator, and if it's not the Yamato, then it has to be the Z. So we want to make sure that we don't take Torps here. We still have one smoke screen left. We also want to make sure that we don't get absolutely obliterated by this Yamato. But uh, like we said, we have a little bit of health to play with. So as long as we don't get uh, dev struck, then, then we'll be all right. But 183,000 here, we're going to try and get a few more shots off. But unfortunately, that Yamato gives up his angle to another Yamato instead of a Napoli and he dies. But uh, as we mentioned, that destroyer is still out there, but the game go ahead, goes ahead and ticks to 1,000 um, due to that. But a nice 3,000 score from us, and then our team drops off the face of the earth. So I'm glad that we got those caps. 183,000, two caps, one defend, uh, and a few sinks there. I'm going to go ahead and throw it to Aaron from the past here, and he's going to go over the stats. Thank you guys for watching. A, a run out. Peace. Um, but this is the bill we're running. We are running Mimbelli with Ingenious. Um, Full speed ahead, sponge, and steer clear. Fully packed as well with lemon and Baltimore. I'm probably gonna switch out lemon there. Not the, not the, maybe not the most useful perk, um, which is nice to go dark though. After right as soon as you're done firing. Um, so, yeah. And then here are the stats for Napoli. A pretty. It's another like super heavy cruiser, as you can see. Their survivability fifty nine thousand. The guns three by three two fifty fours. A unique caliber there. You can still overmatch Mino as you did, as we did blind firing in that smoke there. Um, I don't know. It's it's a fun ship. I I don't think it's what the game needed personally, but it's still better than a battleship or a destroyer in my opinion. Uh, I I wanted Venezia. I wanted Hindenburg. I like I said. I even wanted Zhao. Um, I but uh, you know. It's a cruiser to start to keep your bureau busy. Um, and But yeah, those are the guns, like we mentioned, 16 kilometer range, 14 four second reload there with, with reload mod and Mimbelli. So I think the base is 17. Torpedo launchers, they're nice. We got two long range torpits on that Yamato there. Um, secondaries are SAP. Um, forgot to mention that, so that is nice to know. AA defense is pretty low. Um, 
65 there. Maneuverability is good, 38 knot top speed, 7 second rudder time, you can dodge a lot. Um, also with the chunky armor that we're about to go over, and your concealment, you can get the ship into places that it shouldn't be in, for as big as it is, and for the caliber that it has. But like we mentioned, chunky armor, which means you will take a lot of penetrations. I played a game earlier, which I got absolutely blapped. I misplayed it, mispositioned. Um, so a 25 millimeter bow, but you do have a, I think it's a 60. Yeah, 60 icebreaker there. Uh, so um, good side plating. I think it's only, yeah, 30 side plating, but 220 uh, Citadel belt there. So if you angle, kind of like this, you can actually bounce Yamato shells off that red plate there. Uh, but the thing is, if they hit your nose, they'll just go right through. Or if they hit that 30, they'll just go right through. Um... They actually bounce off the 60 as well, so Yamato players aim high. And, uh, yeah, so, like we mentioned, fairly chunky armor, but also a... Uh, not the best Citadel for range. You want to get in a little bit closer, which, again, actually benefits Membelli. Um, you know, in that closer play style. But uh, the problem is, do you, how close do you get? You know, it's it's one of those slippery slopes where it's like you got to be right. You just got to find the perfect medium there. But uh, that is the Napoli, ladies and gentlemen, the Overview Ironclad Tough Exhaust Smoke Generator. And we'll go ahead and show our mods. Aiming Systems Mod 1, Propulsion, Concealment, and Reload. They did adjust the modifications, so make sure you guys are adjusting accordingly. But uh, yeah, that is the Napoli available in the Bureau. Make sure you guys start her today. So, yeah. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Make sure you guys comment, like, subscribe if you're not already. Hey, run out. Peace.